It's the first day of spring. You guys ready to travel? You ready to, ready to go out and about and get out of our houses? Yes, I hear some applause, some, not a whole lot. I hear some. All right, so believe it or not, the amount of luggage that you are about to see is about what I would travel with, what my wife and I would travel with, with our kids when they were little, one infant, one toddler going to Disney World. And man, let me tell you, it was a chore with the, I, just getting here this morning with this much baggage, I could, I was the only person who could fit in the car with the luggage just getting here this day. Now, we probably didn't need everything that we brought with us when we traveled to Disney, but we had everything we could possibly need for every scenario. The world could, we could be invaded as a country and things could go awry and we would be ready with what we had in these bags. We were ready at all times, but it was so difficult. First loading this stuff into the car and getting the children in the car, strategically placing bags around people. And then it doesn't end once you get into the car because then you gotta go to the airport, right? Now when you get to the airport, you pull into the parking and they got those little glass shacks that you have to go for the bus stop. You know what I'm talking about? When you're waiting for the shuttle bus to actually get you to the terminal. So I get all of this baggage out of the car and drag it all to the bus stop for the shuttle. And there's other people waiting to get on the bus and they see us with our children with all these bags in tow and I could already feel the judgmental eyes. <laughs> because they get on the bus before we do, right? And they're waiting while I'm now loading this luggage onto the luggage rack into the shuttle bus. And I move, in order to get all of my luggage, I had to move other, I felt terrible moving other people's bags in order to fit my baggage into that luggage rack. And if I could only read minds and see thought bubbles above their heads, I know what I think when I see the other people doing what I'm doing. And so I can only imagine they're thinking, why do they need all this stuff? And oh no, there's a baby. I hope they're not on my flight. I do not want to sit next to another infant. And then it doesn't end after you arrive at the terminal because now you have to get this off the shuttle bus and up to ticketing, right? To check in your luggage. So I approach the ticketing counter and there's someone in front of me. And as they approach the counter, they then take their bag and they put it on the scale, right? What happens when you're over the limit? They tell you, I'm sorry, you have to begin, you have to take some stuff out of your bags, ma'am. And this lady in front of me, I've got my luggage and she is holding up the whole process. That's what's going through my mind. I'm looking, because when I go to the airport, I don't just look at what I'm carrying. I look at what other people are carrying too. You guys do this too. And this person is in front of me and they take their bag off the scale because they're over 50 pounds. And I'm thinking, look lady, do you see the size of your suitcase? If you fill this whole thing, it's guaranteed to be over 50 pounds. What are you doing? And she opens her bag up right there and proceeds to unload stuff to make it fit the weight limit. And we all think, we, and we judge people in the courtroom of our minds and they are guilty every time, right? But here's the truth. In everyday life, we're all carrying baggage. In everyday life, we are carrying baggage that is way too heavy. And friends, some of you have been carrying this heavy load for way too long. We're carrying around guilt, regret, emotional pain, pain from broken relationships. Some of us in this room are still carrying comments that were said to us 20, 30 years ago, and we're still carrying this baggage around. We all have this luggage that we haul around in life. And we're starting a new series today because friends, some of what we carry, we've packed on our own. That's the truth. And some of what we carry has been piled on, not just packed for us, piled on to us by others. And this whole next series, 
of teachings is all about allowing God and God's wisdom to remove this burden of baggage from our life so that we can begin traveling light. So as we kick this series off today, I think we need to start, our beginning is where we ignore our own baggage. We ignore the luggage that we're hauling around because we start focusing on what other people are carrying instead. And we become critical of not just what they're carrying, but how they carry it. And we wanna begin telling them how they should manage their baggage, how they should get rid of some of it, how they should give up on some of it because it looks like it's gonna barely make it through baggage claim. We even begin to criticize their luggage because we believe we know a better way to pack their stuff up. And we'll tell them that. But friends, traveling light, as a follower of Jesus, traveling light should bring comfort to a relationship rather than criticism. Did you know that Jesus taught on this subject? We find the first time him speaking of it in Matthew chapter seven. So if you brought your Bible with you, open up your Bible right now, Matthew chapter seven. If you wanna follow along with me, you can also open up our church app. If you hit the Bible button, it'll take you directly to the passage for today, Matthew chapter seven. We're starting right at verse one. And Jesus says, do not judge. Do not judge or you too will be judged for in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And not just with judgment, he goes beyond just our mere judgment. He says, and with the measure you use. He's almost like he's saying, be wary of the intensity by which you judge others. Because it will be measured to you. A judgmental and overly critical attitude towards others, friends, this is so important. What that does is it drives a wedge in relationships. And we see this now in our culture all the time. Our culture has become so polarized over the last few years that I have seen families, relationships, marriages, friendships, right here in our own church body, relationships completely severed because of our judgment and critical nature of one another. Our judgment and critical nature that is a result of the baggage we carry because this stuff is what creates our worldview. And I have seen opinions about baggage cause a polarization in relationships that completely causes people to give up on one another and say, you know what? I don't like that color of baggage, so I don't wanna talk to you anymore. I don't even wanna see your face unfriended. I don't wanna, don't pick up, take my number out of your phone because I want nothing to do with you. I can't even talk to you because of your opinion about something that you've been carrying and packing with you for your whole life. And it causes us to give up on one another and give up on relationship, 10, 15, 20 years worth of relationships over opinions about the stuff that we carry and we've been hauling around for years. Basically, Jesus is saying, look, we look at others and their baggage and we judge them for it in the courtroom of our mind and then we verbalize it. And he's saying, look, it's going to come back around because how you judge others, the intensity by which you enact that judgment and you communicate that judgment and that criticism, it's gonna come back to you. What goes around comes around and that's why it drives a wedge in our relationships because we don't like what they're saying or they don't like what we're saying. 
Think about it. When someone is critical of you, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to give it right back to them, don't you? That, that's what I want to do. And it creates a cycle of criticism in that relationship over and over and over again. And it's only natural when there is a cycle of criticism and judgment in a relationship to want to distance yourself from that, right? We don't want to be around people that treat us that way all the time. But why, why then do we participate in it? Jesus continues. Look at what he says next. Verse three. He says, why? Why? Why do you do this? He says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank that's in your own? And friends, I'm feeling it too because I participate in this too. We all do. I have been in ministry for 20 years and I have taught on this passage more times than I can count. And this is something that we all still tr struggle with. Jesus is making us look in a mirror and he's asking us a tough question. He's saying, why? Why do you do that? Why do you even think about the dust in their eye when you've got your own stuff? You're carrying baggage of your own. He continues, how can you say, how can you say this to your brother? Let me take the speck out of your eye when the whole time, the whole time you're trying to take the speck out of their eye, there is a plank in yours. And this happens all the time. Just let me, let me give you an example of how you can measure this happening. This phrase, who do they think they are? You've never said that. Uh, we all say that. You've all heard people say that. You probably have said that. Who do they think they are? And then it's followed by a laundry list of things that we believe are wrong with them and things they've neglected to do. The way that they pack their bags, how they carry their luggage, how they carry their burdens, what burdens they're allowing themselves to carry, and, a, and it caused them to fail to address something that was important to you and to me. And this is exactly what Jesus is talking about. That phrase, who do they think they are? He says, verse five, this is heavy. He's like, you hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye. And then, and only then, will you see clearly enough to look at the speck in your brother's eye. This is what Jesus is saying. Why are you walking around like this? And then you have the nerve, Jesus says, to go to a friend and say, Terry, Terry, come here. Come here, Terry, right here. Terry, right here. Stand right here. Oh, there's, there's something in your, there's something right there, Terry. Let me fix that for you. Thank you, Terry. Give Terry a hand for me for tolerating that. But you see what I'm seeing? Jesus got jokes. This is what he's got. He's, he's got jokes. He's, he's being sarcastic. Do you see how fool it? That Jesus is saying that we walk around like this all day and we're saying, oh, let me fix you and let me fix you because there's something on your face. Oh, you little bit right, right here. And this is in my way. His point, though, all that sarcasm, his point is so powerful. Listen to the, don't miss this. Because friends, the baggage that we haul around every day, it clouds our judgment. That's what Jesus is saying. This baggage causes me to not see clearly. And judgment is more than me being critical of someone else. Ju clear judgment enables me to make wise choices. Clear judgment allows me to see which direction to go with my life. Clear judgment allows me to see which direction to guide my children and the people that I love. And when I fail to deal with my luggage, it clouds my judgment. I don't like driving at night anymore. 
I used to love driving at night when I was young because the roads were clear. No one else is driving at night except the truckers. And so I could get where I wanted to go a lot faster. But now that as I've matured, I can't see as clearly at night anymore. I don't like driving in storms. I don't like driving on wet roads in the rain because it clouds my judgment when I'm trying to navigate. This is exactly what Jesus is talking about. How can we even begin to clearly guide someone else through critical moments as they're trying to investigate and manage their own baggage when we have failed to deal with our own end not only are we hauling our own around but Jesus is saying you're not just hauling your stuff around it's clouding your judgment <sighs> years ago when I still had hair picture my face flipped upside down you know the beard down here is up here I go to these hairdressers. And so I'm, I'm in the salon, and as hairdressers typically do, you know, they're talking to each other as they're cutting hair. I didn't get into the conversation. When I go places like this, I usually don't tell people who I am or what I do. I try to avoid that subject because I want people to be authentic. I want them to be themselves, not apologize every other sentence for swearing. So I, I don't tell them who I am, and I don't tell them what I do. And I was glad I didn't this particular day because these hairdressers are talking, and they're saying, you know, Susie, she's, she's always talking about that God stuff. And they begin to be critical of her because of how she has criticized them. One of them said this. Let me, let me tell you exactly what she said. She said, I can't picture myself going back to church. This is what my hairdresser's saying. She doesn't even know who's sitting in her seat. I can't picture myself going back to church. It's all about guilt trips and hypocrites. And her only experience with that that she spoke about that day was with Susie. I'm just using a random name instead of using her real name. Because that was their representation of what a Christian was. And now someone else has to go through the process of repairing that misperception of how a Christian should act and behave and speak about others. Because apparently this Christian woman didn't put a whole lot of effort into representing who Jesus really is. Instead, she cared about what they were doing wrong, what they were saying wrong, their behavior. Do you see how that damages God's cause? Do you see how that misrepresents who Jesus is? We should be passionate about our faith. I'm not saying that we shouldn't share our faith. We should absolutely share our story and our experience with our baggage and how Jesus helped us manage it and released it. That we should share. But when it turns into judgment and criticism for someone else, who doesn't even believe what we believe? We could be completely misreading a situation. I was talking to a gentleman out in the lobby, his professor. He said, Frank, what you said is so true. I had a student walk into my classroom late. I've got hundreds of students at this lecture. He, a student walks into my classroom. He happens to be late. And, and I immediately lay into him. He's like, hey, the class started at 9 a.m. You could at least respect the preparation that I've put in and be here on time, not walk in 10 or 15 minutes late. He said it's in front of the whole class. He said, Frank, I was shocked and my mouth hit the floor when he said, I am so sorry, sir. I just, I work at night so I can go to school during the day. It's the only way I can afford to be here. And I got out of my shift late I was up until three or four in the morning, and when I took my nap, I missed it. I'm sorry. And that professor said, I, I'm so sorry. I had no idea what led to that. You won't hear that from me again. Sometimes we don't understand the baggage that people carry because we're so consumed with how we believe things should be and others may not be approaching it from the same worldview. view. 
it doesn't mean that we don't share our faith or care about them. It means that we can approach this with a different method. Going back to our traveling analogy, the TSA has to make judgment calls about what they allow through the airports every single day. They are judging the contents of people's possessions and whether or not they should be allowed to travel, right? We see this all the time, especially if you travel frequently. And they have their own Instagram account because the weirdest things come through TSA. And I'm gonna show you some of them right now. Take a look at this first one. People actually packed a kitten in their luggage. Do you see this? They packed a cat in their bag. Let me read you the legit, this is real, this is not a mock-up, from the TSA, this is what they put, posted with the caption. In 2018, this happened in 2018. 2018, TSA officer at Erie International Airport let the cat out of the bag, literally. <laughs> During the screening, the officer found the cat in the passenger's check bag, and this could have been a dangerous one for the kitten, but we're glad that we were able to rescue her, make sure she got the proper care at the local Humane Society. They rescued the kitten, good story, right? Here's another one. Guy packs a replica bomb with the letter F. Go ahead and throw that next slide up. Replica bomb, he packs this in his carry-on bag. Thinks that this is okay. Here's what the TSA said. Very unique, right? This discovery was made in 2014 at Milwaukee Mitchell International Airport. And one might say it blew up in the passenger's face when they realized they couldn't be cleared to fly. Come on, folks, traveling with items that look like real bombs, grenades, mines, and guns isn't going to work on the plane. Next one, look at this. Guy packed this in his carry-on, a hatchet. Nothing screams, this is what the TSA wrote, listen to this, because this is all real. Nothing screams romance like a personalized hatchet on your wedding day. You could take a stab at trying to figure out a better gift, but nobody knows the groom better than a good old Uncle Johnny. Call this one an accident. But this groom thought it was okay to pack this on his carry-on. Not okay. Last one. I don't know what this guy was preparing for, but he packed this in his carry-on luggage. Look at this TSA agent with this. A chainsaw. <laughs> what the heck is this guy doing? Packing a chainsaw on an airplane. This happened in 2014 when a traveler tried to bring a chainsaw through the checkpoint at Albany International Airport. We're not exactly sure why. Zombie defense, lumberjack goals, chainsaws are not permitted on airplanes. So. What kind of crazy stuff have you been carrying? We all carry crazy stuff through our lives, friends. Stuff that we're afraid if others saw that they would think that we're foolish, right? We're all hauling around feelings, guilt, shame, broken relationships, gossip. Maybe what you've got in here is a grudge that you've been hauling around for way too long. We're all carrying these kind of burdens. And I know because I've shared some of them with you. But listen to what Jesus says about the burdens we carry. Matthew chapter 11, just a few chapters later, Jesus said this, come to me, all you who are weary, all of you who are burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, he says, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. <clears throat> wow. Doesn't that sound different than the polarization that exists in our culture right now? Friends, this, this is how Jesus says we should approach our baggage, our luggage, the stuff we're hauling around. He approaches things with humility and gentleness, 
rather than intense amounts of judgment and criticism. And instead of imposing that judgment and laying it down, he says, learn from me. We should be bringing comfort to people's lives instead of criticism. That's what Jesus represents here. And that's not only for others, but some of you need to hear this today, that that's, that's for you too. Because some of you in this room have been piling that judgment and that criticism onto yourselves. It should be about comfort instead of criticism and learning instead of lashing out. So as we travel together through this next series of teachings, I want us to begin throughout the week preparing our hearts, preparing our minds to learn from this wisdom that God has for us each week and apply it to ourselves and to the way that we treat others so that we start leaving these burdens behind. And take the wisdom that God offers us and begin traveling light. <laughs>